35 and Schedule 1. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Chair. Um, I call the Honourable David Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And when it comes to clause uh, part three of this bill, um, it's important that we have a long debate on that since there was such a short debate on part two, which was an um, important order. part of the. the um, order. Sit down. I'm on my feet. It is inappropriate for any member to question the decision of the chair to accept the closure motion. I accepted it and it is not to be commented on. The Honourable David Bennett. Mr Chair. Okay, part three. Very sensitive day today, isn't it? Because um, um, order, we've had two parts of legislation order, go through. Sit down. And you're not allowed to uh, uh, comment on a ruling that I've just made. That's two. Don't do it again. Third time, I will terminate your speech. The Honourable David Bennett. Mr Chair, thank you for that. So when we come to part three of the bill, uh, the Overseas Investment Amendment Act, uh, we've talked about uh, the enforcement and other miscellaneous matters within the bill. And uh, when we look at the enforcement issue, uh, it also comes down to what you would be enforcing in the bill about. And um, it's important to look at uh, some of the options where enforcement could come into effect. And if we look at uh, section 39 as amended, um, it says the regulator may require any person to provide information for statistical or monitoring purposes. That seems fairly required, uh, fairly um, standard uh, approach, and then you get to section 40, which the regulator may require a person who is subject to condition to provide a statutory declaration. That is also a uh, fairly basic sort of um, approach. Uh, but then when we get to, uh, down to the new sections 41A A to 41D, uh, we get to things like providing information or documents and uh, confidentiality of information and documents and conditions relating to publication and disclosure of information and documents. And that's where it gets a little bit more interesting because the confidentiality is something that this government is not known for. Um, it, it, is, it has prided itself on having openness and transparency. That was what we were told when the, they started off in government. And yet we have yet to see that. And I just want to give an example of how we want to see the, how they would relate to that confidentiality in this situation. And so just take the situation of an um, overseas investor that wants to come to New Zealand and invest in land. Uh, that overseas investor may have uh, less than reputable history in their home country. Uh, they may not meet um, a good faith test that one would expect. Uh, they may even have a source of income uh, and source of assets that one would not expect. And yet, when we come to that information about the confidentiality of information and documents, it will be really interesting to see um, about the source of those funds that come into the country and how they're used. And take that potential investor that comes in, uh, Mr Chair, it's in Clause 41C, if you're looking for it there. Um, and so t take that potential investor that may come in um, from that overseas country. Now, there's an exemption for forestry that's carved out in the legislation. So with that exemption for forestry, um, they don't actually have to provide the information that would normally be expected. So there is an element of confidentiality there for, the, for that particular buyer. And um, what is even more important than that, and something that hasn't really been transversed in the debate so far, is the payments that will actually be made to that investor. So what will happen under this legislation is that there is an exemption for forestry. But at the same time, the government is going to introduce payments to forestry. So there will be an incentive that the government will give through its ETS program for forestry. We have yet to see the amount of that incentive, but we know it's coming. So effectively, that foreign investor that may have a background that is less than uh, rigorous and less than successful in the sense of a normal investor that would come in under an overseas investment regime would have a free ride to come into New Zealand to pick the best of New Zealand land that's under 1,000 hectares, it's probably in the Waikato, put that land into forestry and, um, and not care about it. As the Minister has said, uh, when he spoke before, 
uh, that uh, he was lose a one percent return that would be sought after by some of those. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, just Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. So there would be a one, Mr. Chair. The Honourable David Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the, 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 the minister, when he spoke, talked about a 1% return as being something that some of those investors from overseas that are just looking to park their money would be quite happy about. Now, are we going to have that confidentiality clause apply when we actually have the payment that will come from the New Zealand government to that investor? And I can guarantee you that, that payment that will come, because there will be a forestry incentive payment coming under the ETS. Oh, yes. We know that's coming. So, so basically that foreign investor that might be less than reputable, not meet any criteria under New Zealand foreign investment now, will get a free ride to invest in New Zealand, will be confidentiality clauses will apply, and then there will be a payment to them from the New Zealand government. Now we don't know whether that payment is actually going to be equal across all forestry investments, whether that payment is going to be on the basis of scale of forestry investment. We don't know if that payment actually would be there to encourage that investor to come in. And there may be some other compensation that that person was looking for as well. And so potential of this clause to be used in this bill to actually mean that it will hide information around someone that may be less than reputable, that has got a free ride to invest in New Zealand land now under this legislation by going to forestry, and will get a payment from the New Zealand government which would exceed the 1% return that the Minister had said that would some people around the world be quite happy with. In fact, many people that are in that situation that a confidentiality clause shouldn't apply to don't want any return. They just want to park their money up for a number of years. Um, and they just want to have a, um, a, a, a balance of investments around the world because they may have um, a, a business interest in their home country that they're not so clear about. What was that from the member across there? That member across there That's that has been trying to be lo this will look after this bill. He has. So, Mr Chair, I think there is a real problem here in transparency for this government because we have heard this is going to be the most transparent government out. And what is happening here is the worst kind of a foreign investor. The person that doesn't want to actually add to the New Zealand economy, that actually would take um, a, a very effective dairy farm or kiwi fruit farm or apple farm out of that and put into forestry just to park their money, just to have their assets there. And they would be quite willing to do that. And knowing that they're getting a guaranteed return from the New Zealand government on that investment, and nobody would know. Nobody will know. And, and the members opposite say, oh, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. Well, mark my words. The exact people that want to come and invest in New Zealand that can't now under our current regime, because they are banned because of the, 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 whether they've got a reputation in their country, or whether the funding that they're going to bring in, there's a source issue, or whether they're not going to add anything to the New Zealand economy, they just want to park up their assets, have now got a free ride and a free check. They got a free check from this government. And I can't understand why the New Zealand First Party that's against foreign ownership is now enabling foreigners to come in and paying for them to come in. Because that's what they're going to do. You're going to, the, the New Zealand First Party will be passing in this parliament before the end of the year or next year a payment to forestry investment. That's right. And they are paying for foreigners to buy New Zealand land. That's right. That's right. What has happened to New Zealand First? But that's, that's what happens to Shane Jones running it and making great economic decisions. And where's the Green Party? The Green Party that's for the environment. Where are they? Why aren't they, why aren't they actually thinking about those kind of potential investors that will have their hands on dirty money? Yeah, there could be money from the, making bombs that are sold around the world. That's who the Green Party is letting coming into New Zealand now and have a free investment. And what's worse? They're going to pay for it. They're actually going to pay for it. And then nobody will ever know because of the confidentiality clauses that will be in this. So, Mr Chair, I think this is a disgrace to the New Zealand Parliament. I think it really shows that how if you make legislation on the hop and you're doing it for a particular issue and not actually looking at what their practical application will be, it will mean 
that New Zealanders are taken for a ride by the wrong people. And what we need is an open, transparent government, and we need to be able to know who are making these investments, why they are making these investments, where the money came from. Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, the Honourable Damien O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just take uh, an opportunity to clarify a few things uh, in part three.